Hey everyone, my Souls Like template project is done and I've uploaded it to Fab, but now we're just waiting for it to launch. So I did take a few days off of developing things, but it's been about a week now, and uh, I've been wanting to start a game based on my boat content. Something like Shipwreckers, if you've ever seen that game. I want it to have a stylized look to it. I have a ton of asset packs I've collected over the years, so I'll take a look through those first. Okay, so I've found this pack. Low Poly Style Deluxe 2, Tropical Environment, and it contains an island environment with a rowboat as well as a larger ship with cannons. A pirate ship at that. So this should be a great start. Looking at the first level of shipwreckers as an example, we've got a forward attack that fires a single cannonball and a side attack that fires four shots. Of course, enemy ships that share your abilities so we're going to need a common base class. Other enemies include structures like stationary cannon, flamethrower, and fireball turrets, as well as non-enemy obstacles such as flamethrower traps, saw traps, etc. Items include ammo, health crates, and weapon types, as well as power-ups for things like speed. There are also interactable switches to open gates. I am not sure if I want to have limited ammo for progression reasons, so I'll keep the main forward attack unlimited, but the special weapons will have limited ammo. With all that figured out, let's get started on these core mechanics. I don't want to simply recreate the game. I want to expand on the game in some way, but I'll think about that as I complete the basics. I'm starting this off with my incomplete drivable boats project, so the buoyancy and input are already in place. I just had to set the mesh and adjust the pontoons for the size of this new mesh. Next, I need a cannonball actor. The mesh is easy, just a default sphere with a black material. Kind of torn between glossy and matte, but I'll go with glossy for now. So I'll be using the projectile movement component to send it through the air. And of course, on the hit event, it needs to cause damage, explode, etc. The spawn point for the cannonballs will be handled as socket locations in the boat mesh. I can even control rotation that way if I need to. Now our boat can shoot cannonballs forward, although a little quickly. This is a delay of 0.2 seconds. I'll change that to 0.5 seconds later. Next we have audio, so within the attack function where it spawns the cannonball, it will also play a sound. AI navigation is part of my drivable boats project, but I added an AI service to the movement task in the behavior tree to attack when close to their target. When a ship's health reaches zero, and should sink, the death function is called, in which I destroy the AI operator, and sinking the ship is done by setting the mesh's weight to three times default. So, now I've got the player ship, some basic enemy ships, the boats have health, take damage, and they sink. Now I need to give the player ship both weapons and the ability to switch between them. The port and starboard quad cannonball attack is mostly the same as the standard forward one, but instead it uses four sockets for each side. For different weapons, I am using components. The player's current weapon will be a variable in the boat pawn. The attack input calls the current weapon's attack function, and that way, each weapon will have its own behavior, but with the same input. With more than one weapon in place, I now need a way to switch between them. To facilitate that and visualize that, I have to get started on the HUD widgets. In the original game, weapons are housed in a weapon wheel HUD element. It's a new type of widget challenge for me, so I welcome it. Alright, I've just created the HUD textures in GIMP, and I've made the widget. Now I need to assign weapons to positions on the wheel, as well as animate the highlighter to move to the selected weapon. I want the weapons to always be placed in their respective slots, so I think I'll just use a data asset to list them, then since they're all 45 degrees apart, I'll just multiply their list index by 45, and that will give me the new rotation for the highlighter image. 
For positioning the weapon icons radially around the widget, I decided to go with a dynamic approach. In the construct event, I generate the images a specified distance from the center of the wheel, starting with up, which is the negative y-axis. As weapons are added, I use the rotate vector function to rotate that distance, and that gets the image position exactly where it needs to be. And there we have it, the weapon highlight works as planned. And that's extremely satisfying. Only issue is that it doesn't wrap properly, and I find this is usually the case with the default wrap function. I don't know, I'll just make my own. And finally, some more satisfying effects when a ship sinks. Well, that about does it for this video. This progress has been over the course of a few days, I think three nights. I want to keep going with it, uh, but what direction should I take? How should I make this unique from the original game? Let me know your thoughts. Thanks for watching and have a good one.